know, going into Iowa as a walk on, I knew like the weight room was going to be my end all be all to success. If I wanted to find my way onto the field, I was going to have to be be coachable, you know, get strong, fast. Um, if I was going to try to play safety in the Big Ten, came in at about a buck eighty five, buck ninety, and I knew if I want to be successful in Big Ten football, I'd have to put on fifteen twenty pounds um, while getting faster at the collegiate level. So. From the get-go, I just really enjoyed it. Um, awesome staff there at the University of Iowa during my time. And, uh, you know, Iowa being a developmental program, taking guys and putting on weight, bigger, faster, stronger, um, that's what allows us to compete with some of those bigger colleges, universities that can get those those big recruits that we don't necessarily get. Um, so I think that's part of the reason we found success. Um, you know, during my, th- you know, three, four years of playing, whether it's special teams or safety at Iowa, You know, we didn't lose very many football games, definitely weren't weren't perfect, but a lot of that came back to our time in the weight room and developing guys from, you know, walk-ons who ended up being starters, team captains, and lower recruits that ended up being all Big Ten, all-American guys. And that's just the Iowa football program in a nutshell. Um, And then once I got to the NFL, it's definitely different um, because you got got guys who are in the NFL super young, you know, 18, 19 years old, somehow went through college in three years or – you know, got drafted young. And then you've also got guys that are, you know, in year 13, 14 in the league. So not everybody's doing the same lift. Um, it's kind of, it took me a little bit of time to adjust coming from a program like Iowa where it's like, hey, toe on the line. We're going to do things right. We're going to do things 100% all the time. Where you get to the NFL, it's almost a, it's almost a step back. Um, I don't want to say it's relaxed, but where I was um, in L.A., it was a totally different vibe and it took me some, some time to get used to because the reason I was successful at Iowa was because, um, like you said, I was very regimented in my attention to detail and, you know, being coachable in the weight room and loving to work out where in the NFL, at least in my experience so far with the Rams, it wasn't as um, intense, so to say. We got good work in. We had great coaches, amazing training staff, but it was definitely a little different feel that I think allows guys – whether you're you're in year ten or in year one as a rookie coming out, everyone could get good work in and you know optimize performance on Sundays instead of developing guys. You're kind of already at that point where it's like maintain strength, maintain speed, go out and play good football on Sundays. You talk about playing on Sundays, and you know in Iowa it was pretty routine. We played Saturday, like maybe there was a night game, but it wasn't too much of this Friday Sunday blah blah blah. You had to do a lot of that in the NFL, and you still are. How do you take care of your body to be able to handle the rigors of it with, you know, a, a non-normal pattern? Yeah, it's all about finding a routine. Um, find a routine and stick to it. Uh, even though I've been in the league four years, this was the first year where I ever I actually made the roster from the jump. Um, I played in, you know, all up until I got hurt, I played in every, every game the first 15 weeks of the year. And I found a really good routine, whether it was we were playing on Sunday, Monday, or Thursday. Um, you know, every morning I was doing a 25 minute sauna followed by a four minute cold, cold plunge every day, just to start the day. And then a nice little mobility routine before bed with a foam roll and stretching out. And then, like I said, the practices, um, definitely getting good work in full speed, but it's, it's definitely a lot less of a load, um, throughout the week in an NFL game week. So my biggest thing was just finding a routine, finding a routine that worked for me and sticking to it. And it's kind of the same thing I did at Iowa, just not not as intense in terms of the weight room and the, the on field prep. Um, but that's that's my biggest advice and the thing that's you know guided me my, throughout my career is finding routines, sticking to it, and just being consistent day in and day out. <clears throat> this audience, you know, we have people that are either you know here in America, or overseas, and there's been a big rugby following too. Um, you know, both coaches and rugby athletes. Uh, the, the reason I'm asking this next question and prefacing it with that is, you know, you were now playing in the NFL with dudes you maybe used to look up to. And what was that mindset shift like? And what would be your piece of advice to any of our listeners, whether, you know, they're going to play American football or any other sport, and they're now playing with people that they used to look up to? How did you handle that? And what do you recommend? Yeah, it's a crazy asset. I actually just recorded a video about mentorship for uh Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America, one of my buddy works with them. So I sent out a video about that earlier this morning. And uh, in that, I talked about I was lucky enough to find um, and have a relationship with Eric Weddle. He's one of the – he's oh, someone shit. I like – he was my yeah. hero growing up. Like 
safety in the league, drafted, became the highest paid safety at one one point, absolute killer on the field. In my rookie year, he just signed with LA. Um, he was a, you know, go, I think my rookie year was his 10th year, um, you know, going to be a Hall of Famer. And like, as soon as I got signed to the 90 man roster after a pro day and the combine and all that stuff, um, I kind of kept my distance at first, but then I was like, you know, I'm just going to try to take advantage of this. Like this dude's a, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's first team all pro. Like he's someone that's absolute grinder. I'm talking about this dude worked out like seven, eight times a week in the weight room, lifting, getting after it, extra stuff. Um, so that was someone I like, you know, something I've always, you know, preach was like find the, the hardest worker and in, in the room and go out work them. And that's something I kind of pride myself on. It's that was pretty tough to do my rookie year with him because that dude was just grinding at all times. But he allowed me to like attach myself to him at the hip. Like whether it was extra film, whether it was extra lifts a couple times in the week during the morning before anything kicked off. Um, I just kind of found him to be a great mentor. Uh, without him, I don't know if I would have stuck out the next three years in, in the league with some of the ups and downs that came with it. But uh, definitely just finding someone that you look up to, whether it's on the team, uh, whether it's someone that played before you and just having someone you could kind of touch base with, talk to, um, help you through some things, whether it's questions about, you know, technique or off the field issues, whatever it may be. Um, I'm a big believer in trying to find a mentor, sticking with them, and they can definitely, you know, bring out the best in you throughout your process. <clears throat> you know, you just alluded to it with the the ups and downs. I don't know anything other than, you know, maybe seeing some, you know, being on the roster, being not on the roster, you play, um, you know, a role that people see a lot of as the personal protector on punt. Um, you know, what was kind of your journey and what did you learn and how has it made you a better now husband and father? Yeah, you know, it's been a, it's been a hell of a journey. That's for sure. I mean, I think, it, I think at this point I've only been with the Rams. Um, I've been cut six different times in my four years. Uh, there's been times where they signed me back to the practice squad. There's been times where they, you know, two years in a row, they sent me home for a couple of weeks and then brought me back um, after either checking out a new guy and not liking what they saw um, or, you know, somebody went down with an injury, whatever it may be. Um, it's been it's been tough. Uh, but then it it's found a way to work out um, and it wouldn't have happened without the support of my wife, Haley, my friends, my family. Um, there was a point in the season last year, which was my th or two years ago now, I should say, which was uh, the year we won the Super Bowl in 2021. Um, I had moved a linebacker. I thought I played well in the preseason, ended up tearing my oblique Ooh. two days before the last preseason game. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.